The C preprocessor is actually a totally separate process that occurs before compilation. And in our uh, compile and link, or our CL in Microsoft, and also on our CC, you can set a switch to only pre-process the source file. You might want to just make sure that things are syntactically going to work properly uh, with the preprocessor statements and not bother with all the rest of the compile. So you can, you can just run the preprocessor step. Uh, we don't have a lot of call for that, but it's good if you're debugging a, a large source source file. The preprocessor is uh, responsible for file inclusion with the pound include. We've seen a lot of that. Macro substitution. We've seen a little bit of that with the pound define. And also conditional inclusion with uh, various forms of, of uh, pound if. We'll look at those here in a second in another slide. So let's say uh, what we've already worked with, pound include standard io.h that's that's pretty reasonable we looked at the less than greater than and the double quotes before to show the difference of including the standard io.h out of the typical installation dependent location where header files are stored as opposed to using double quotes here which uh, starts in the directory containing the .c source file that that we're inside of here, and then it will go on from there to uh, implement implementation dependent paths that might be used to store C source. Here's a very simple define of uh, the letters PI to be this number 3.14159, and uh, we normally make these constants like this as uppercase so that you can see them when you're working with them in the code. So that if you set something equal to PI in the capital PI, it's actually going to be replaced before the code is ever compiled with this number. Those uh, letters will never make it through to the compiler. Now here's an actual small function that's being defined for macro substitution. Again, we use the uppercase to keep this consistent so that if you see a function call, it kind of will look like a function call with the parentheses and all. You'll understand since it's uh, all uppercase and that's your own convention that that's not really a function call. It's a macro substitution. What we've said here is that if somebody uses this sequence of characters, uh, max and two variables uh, with a comma between them, what we will do is substitute whatever's in this position and this position, A and B, into this sequence of characters, A and B. And uh, th this is our old comparative operator. Uh, we have a test over here, and if the test is true, we take this value, and if the test is false, we take that value. Uh, remember that, A uh, in this case, we're going to use is A greater than B. If it is, return A. If it is not, return B. And that's our max function. If we actually used max down inside uh, our program someplace, it would look like this. Say max X plus Y and F plus G just for conversation's sake. What would be substituted is X plus Y would be substituted where A was. So it comes in here and in here. And F plus G gets substituted into this set of parens. So this arithmetic operation will be performed and we'll do a comparison to see uh, if it's true x plus y will be returned as the max value and if it's false uh, then we know this is the larger one and f plus g will be returned now you have to be careful about doing this because wherever you use this thing in your code this is what's going to come in to your source code before the compile happens. If you really use this a lot, you should make it a function and just call it as a function. Because if, if you use it a lot and use this kind of macro substitution, you're going to wind up uh, creating a lot of extra code. Because a function is just created once and then you call it, this substitution is created over and over and over again uh, throughout your source code. So it's something to be aware of. Now here's conditional inclusion. Uh, in this case, if a previously defined preprocessor value called system is equal to another previously defined value like sysv or sys5, then we'll define our header hdr value as sysv.h. Else if, elif, else if system equals bsd, we'll pound define the header as bsd.h, else if msdos, define the header as msdos, and then a final else. Notice this works just like the if and else if uh, that we had in the C language itself. Else will pound define header as default.h. Then we have an end if that closes this up, and we include whatever header is defined as now, which is in that case, default H, or it could have been any of these values based on what the system value was as we came into this preprocessor set of statements here. 
So that's conditional inclusion. And we also have a nice item called if not defined, and this stops redefinition. Let's say that inside the header.h file, we can do an f if ndef. If not defined header, then go ahead and, and do these statements. Define header and do other things that header dot h is supposed to do for us and then that's the end of our if if you make sure to wrap all of the statements of your header files and things like that you can include the header file over and over and over again in all of your c source files but it will only wind up being expanded once because the hdr header will be defined or whatever your variables are whatever your name is that you use in the in the header files and it it stops redefinition and it helps the preprocessor move along and get the job done a little quicker so that's some uh, the the basics of the preprocessor pretty simple yet very powerful so moving right along